Hello, welcome to John B. RD, the research desk. Today I will be covering the PDF file for achieving universal birth registration. Birth registration is closely linked to a person's legal identity. It provides an official and permanent recognition of an individual. Beyond the recognition of an individual, birth registration also establishes the connection of a child to her or his family through the recording of the parent's name. Later in life, the proof of legal identity provided by the birth registration and the official birth certificate allows individuals to access services and exercise their rights. For example, the recording of the child's date of birth as part of the birth registration can later help prevent child marriage. I actually don't believe that because it ain't never stopped it before. Um, they usually always point out to child marriage or child cross, but uh, they don't see it wrong for adults. And until they look at it that way, it's never going to be solved. So by saying birth registration actually stop that, it's preposterous. So continuing, birth registration is an integral part of 2030 agenda. Go 16 on peace, justice, and strong institutions, including target 16.9 on the provision of the legal identity for all, including birth registration. This reflects on the importance of civil registration for legal identity and ultimately the promotion of peaceful and inclusive societies. Inclusive. That is that deep horrible talk. <clears throat> I'm going to place again here. Sorry about that. I was actually pressing that downward arrow. Accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. Goal 17 on the partnership for goals includes indicator 17.19.2. Partnership for goals includes indicator and the proportion of the countries that achieve 100% birth registration by 2030. It highlights the importance of registration and it's used for statistics both for and monitoring sustainable development. And as an indicator of statistical capacity, by improving birth registration, countries are thus also contributing to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. This is a chart information of how to look at it. The Regional Action Framework contains four targets on different faucets of birth registration. Target 1A on the birth registration within one year stresses the need for registration birth soon after the occurrence to ensure access to services, facilities, and exercise of rights. Registration soon after birth also reduce the risk of misreporting. So this is their anger towards uh, articles that are covered by like rap court or something like that. They've been angry with, with that. Increases the likelihood of registration of the death of a child. Also, hold on. I'm sorry, I gotta pause here and go back to uh, 
what I was saying about the rap board. There's also no sure way to document accurately those who have no birth certificates as well. That's like, I might get in trouble for saying this, but like Africa, 25 million people have a disease. I can't say which one. This is just to protect my channel. Um, but there's, there's many of them who have not been documented as far as research goes. So with their plans, I don't see how, like I'll read this, I'll read all of this, but they don't really say a oh, course or a plan, and you'll notice that. And then they also say it depends heavily upon the uh, data base. To reduce the risk of mis re misreporting information and increases the likelihood of registered of the death of a child, which might not have been recorded otherwise timely. Registration is a precursor to timely vital statistics on births and in infant mortality. Nevertheless, the registration of a birth alone does not constitute proof of civil registration. That's contradictory. It should be accompanied by the issuance of a birth certificate. But, also, but unfortunately, this is not always the case. The reasonable action framework, therefore, includes target 2A on the provision of the birth certificates after registration, although it is important to register at birth soon after its occurrence, various factors such as the lack of parental awareness. So they're trying to blame it on ignorance. Difficulties in accessing registration points or other overly complex requirements or procedures can prevent the registration of a child in a timely manner. So let's read that again. Complex requirements and procedures can prevent the registration of a child in a timely manner. Um, no, that's that's it's not accurate. That would be poverty, the cycle of poverty. More or less, it is the damages by governments when they take vocational skills out of high school for profit. Most schools and colleges do not teach financial literacy. Who tells the schools what to teach and what not to teach? The government. So I do not think it's fair to blame citizens. When we pay ridiculous amounts of tax money, even for schools, we pay taxes to go to school. And yet you have to pay for it again. So with that said, you can't really blame the citizen. And that's just my take on it. It's not really opinion, it's a statement. I stand by it strongly. Target 1B on birth registration of children under five years old reflects the importance of <clears throat> elevating this issue by processing late registration relatively early in the life of a child. Finally, since the birth registration and birth certificates are critical all throughout the life course, courses, the regional action framework includes target 1C on the registration rate of the entire population, reflecting the accumulated efforts to register births and potential blockage or backlog of individuals who need to obtain legal documentation. Figure three shows many countries have already achieved or are progressing towards achieving these targets. Nonetheless, the target 1B on children under five and target, once it, why, why only under five? Why this exclude? people in the same article you say you claim is universal. 
So this tells me one that you either want to use more tax money to put it into bill under medical coverage for all. And then you say stakeholders. So then you also have investors. And then you're going to use government owned businesses as a priority to make sure that those stakeholders get their investment back in the interest. Now it's business. So I can't really say that's exactly wrong. But how you go about it matters. How you plan to go about it matters. So that's my other take. I'll look at the definition here later and show you why I mean that. But under five and the target one C on the entire population whose birth has been registered. Data availability is not always sufficient to access progress. And these targets can also be used to answer important questions about the status of birth registration in Asia and the Pacific. So again, it's not exactly universal. It's targeting mainly Asia and the Pacific. Our birth registered within a year. As explained above, it is critical for the births to be registered soon after their occurrence. Article 7 of the Convention on the Rights of the Children emphasized the need to register children immediately after birth. 42 countries in the region report having a legally specific period during which registration of birth for most, this period is between two weeks and three months from the date of birth. So that wall was created to oppress people. So what this said, my concern would be that, will you use this bill to then punish the parents who failed to get birth certificate? Because it's not, it's not the parents who failed alone, it was the government. So my stance is you got to take accountability and put the trash in the can where it belongs. So by punishing them, you would one, take their children away, two, put them in places like we have issues with CPS taking children. We yeah, have issues with orphanages putting these children in jails as a way of increasing the headcount so they get funding. And then you put them into working environments at the same time. But who gets that money? Does the jail get that money for housing them? And this is, it means that you treat them as if they're ignorant, as if they cannot have control and calculate their money expenses financially. Mm. So I've got plenty of concerns about this bill. I also look at it as a way of them only focusing on the voting. We know how they, uh, they use people with disabilities on that matter. After this period, many countries ask for additional documents for a late registration fee. So then now they got to pay more, which may discourage the registration of births. Um, I don't see why it would discourage it all. Let's, let's make any excuses like, oh, what could it be that made them stop? But you know. One country in the region requires a fee to register births during the legal specific specified time. Time period while one other country does not have any legislation about it. Um, kudos to that country. 
it seems like they're embarrassed to say which country that was. Mm -hmm. The legally specified period for birth registrations is somewhere across Asia and the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Apparently not, because we just pointed out that it wasn't. The only exemption, exemption in the North and Central Asia subregion, where at least three countries have a free registration period of six days or less. Um, at the time, that must not have been the case. It could say free registration, but at the same time, it's not really free because they got to pay medical for hospital bills. And most of them pay that out of pocket still. You still got to pay for your medical coverage. So, no, nah. that's just sugar coating. So it's like a for profit system. But we all know that. Unfortunately, our legally specified time period during which registration is free is not specified or sufficient, I'm sorry, to ensure universal birth registration. Oh, well, no, that's common sense. Because you have to look at the big picture, not just the frame, right? It's more than just birth certificates, it's also financial literacy. Also learning skills. The situation at the beginning of the decade varied greatly from one subregion to the other, while half of the countries in the region mostly located in the east and the northeast Asia and the north and central Asia registered more than 95% of their births within a year. Many other countries lagged behind. Nevertheless, these countries set ambitious targets for 2024. Thought it was uh, 2030, but they want to achieve it before 2030, and they must make fast progress to achieve them. Since the inception of the decade, countries have implemented several activity programs to reforms to improve their, and it stops. Another chart, CRVS system, including birth registration. These efforts were particularly notable in countries that had low birth registrations completeness. At the beginning of the decade, for example, Kiribati, or Kyrie Batty opened civil registration desks in hospitals. Afghanistan revised its registration laws, and Bangladesh is implementing an online birth and death registration information system. Coupled with the establishment of multi sectoral national co coordination mechanisms and a much better understanding of the gaps remaining required by making a detailed assessment of national CRVS systems. This has resulted in significant progress towards and targets set by countries. Indeed, the region has more great progress on birth registration completeness, i.e. the percentage of births which are registered. Within one year of the occurrence between the Baseline 2014, most countries, and midterm 2018 for most countries. See figure five. This progress is mostly visible in countries which had low birth registration completeness at the beginning of the decade. And while there remain large differences in the region, the gap is closing. Countries such as Afghanistan and Com Cambodia registered few of their births in 2014. They have managed to drastically increase birth registration completeness should countries continue progressing at the same pace during the second half of the decade. The picture of both registrations completeness will be more similar across sub-regions of Asia and the Pacific. Nevertheless, many countries most accurate their process, progress to achieve or must accelerate their progress to achieve the target of birth registration completeness by the end of the decade. 
so people were registering for birth certificates, but they still failed to put it in the database. It's another chart with information how to use it. Now it's saying box two. Birth registrations in the face of natural disasters. Then you add to and the triple cyclone PAM. Since 2008, the civil registration completeness of Van Uatu, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, guys, has increased by the civil registration system. It was put to the test in 2015 when the country was hit hard by a tropical cyclone PAM. Although the death toll was limited, over half of the country's 270,000 population were affected, and about a third of affected people were displaced. The Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Department, in collaboration with other national stakeholders, as well as United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and the United National Development Program, UNDP, responded to crisis increasing capacity for registered and launching awareness campaigns and mo mobile registration operations. The cost of travel was a major obstacle for many families, so registration points were opened, and remote islands and catch-up days were organized in areas that lacked access to government services. As a result, more than 250,000 children and adults were issued a birth certificate, including 80,000 for the first time. A mini census with complete enumeration conducted in 2017 showed that 85% of their population had a birth certificate. The Department of Civil Registry also signed memorandums of understanding with the Ministries of Health and Education to exceed the registration bill to midwives and teachers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Ministries of Health and Education ex extend the registration role to midwives and teachers. So again, they put people in a box saying, we're going to just put the responsibility on a citizen as if we were doing our part. Mm -hmm. In some areas, there needs to be reform in how you handle cycle poverty in your school system. Further parent partnership are still being developed, for example, to link national identification to voter registration. Finally, and critically, with regards to national disasters, the government of Ben, ben to developed a central civil registration database with support from the UNICEF. And the government of Australia, the locally developed system is better adapted to the specific needs of the country. And in post disaster registration campaigns, the database ensures accuracy and avoiding double registrations. As Bangladesh is ranked by the United Nations, Guildford Cities Institutes for Environmental and Human Security as the world's most at risk country for natural hazards. Efforts to increase in resilience of the CRV system are even more critical. Environment and human security is the world's most at risk country. So is it really universal? If a birth is registered, is a birth certificate then issued? Ideally, the registration of the birth should be accompanied by a provision of the birth certificate for individuals to claim identity and civil status and ensure related rights. It is critical to provide these documents for legal and administrative purposes. Legal documents should be accessible 
at no fee or low fee and delivered soon after the registration of a vital event. Legal documentation, in particular legal identity, is strongly linked with a broad range of rights and activities and efficient, efficient CR yeah, system can help everyone to claim the, their rights. Well, even those with us that have rights get it violated. For this reason, the United Nations recently launched an agenda on legal identity that emphasizes its link in civil registration, CBOX 4. A birth certificate gives an individual access to a range of rights and services, and they, re they repeat this over and over and over again. For example, 35 countries in Asia and the Pacific report using the birth certificates as a primary source document in issuing national passports. Well, that's always been the case. It's nothing new. While 36 countries require a birth certificate for enrolling in primary school, as everybody. Moreover, 23 countries said a birth certificate is required for receiving childbirth allowance. These examples show the importance of a birth certificate for individuals throughout their lifetime. Although required birth certificates for the provision of services has a positive effect on registration completeness, it is important to emphasize the access of education and the rights to health or human rights, which should not be restricted due to the lack of documentation. You keep saying documentation, but when you said all of that, it shouldn't be restricted to the amount of money that's in the bank account. So, but you're gonna charge a fee for it anyways. But nothing comes free, right? <laughs> Most countries report issuing birth certificates for all registered births. Nevertheless, in countries such as New Zealand and Tonga, birth certificates were not automatically issued free of charge after registration. Explaining the lower percentage of registered births for which a certificate was issued in New Zealand. No, that does not explain it. It's, it's, it's false. So look, they registered. They paid the fee, but they didn't get it. So that's what that's saying. It's not very much transparency there either. Parents and kids do not need a paper certificate as data are shared across the government to allow access to services such as parental payments. Hold up, hold up. Parents, parents increasingly do not need a paper certificate as data are shared across the government to allow, and then that's flawed. It's putting a band-aid on the issue just by throwing it out freely to just anybody. It doesn't fix the problem. In Tonga, breast treatments are needed for a child to enter school, and parents often wait until that moment to order a birth, birth certificate. Um, no, they probably worked very, very hard to save up the money to do so. And it took them that long because they got all other life expenses. And they don't call it the working poor for nothing. How many children under five have not had their birth registered? Various factors such as the lack of parental awareness. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that is a factor. I won't disagree, but you can't just blame it on parents. Difficulties in accessing registration points or overly complex requirements or procedures can prevent the registration of a child soon after birth. The impact of those factors emerges with higher frequency and are very valuable for vulnerable groups. 
such as ethnic. <laughs> ethnic is like a virtue. It is moral. All right. So now you could just say race. Um, be more direct. Or language minorities. Um, would it be whites because we're 8%? We're the real minorities. It's crazy how the, the word minorities get thrown around to every race. It is vital to box three, the issues of the state, statelessness. What? That's, that's crazy to say. In Central Asia, mainly originated from the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the information. Oh, okay. Let's say. So using system. Indeed, what was internal migration under the old regime left people stranded across the borders without Soviet passports or proof of their place of birth. Women who often migrate when marrying were disproportionately affected when new borders were created and their children inherited this precarious status to this day. Countries in the region are trying to address the issue. Um, you can address the issue by stopping wars for greed and control. I mean, like, look, it's like this. You can't claim to be one person and act completely opposite the, the next moment. It don't work that way. You stand for it or you don't. There's, there's a major difference in being like a virtuous man slash hero, a controlled monster. It's not exactly hormone, it's like a rabbit. It doesn't get petrified and run either. It's the only thing it could do. Then it's just being wildly outrageous and stirring your communities or society as a whole and ruining businesses. It just, it just doesn't work like that. It's not what a virtuous man is, a hero or a woman. I'm not sexist. See here. Since 2014, the government of Kyrgyzstan has worked hand in hand with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, to eliminate all known cases and statelessness in the country. Is it state statelessness or lawlessness? It's just like beating around the bush there. It's like degrading the people. That's not good. This ambitious project was started as part of the global hashtag I belong campaign. So they made it about racism, which is also racist to you. Michael, okay. Uh, I'll touch on I belong. So, treating people like they don't belong results in homicide. So does bullying people. All right. So it doesn't just boil down to racism. It also boils down to mental health. And you'd be surprised how many of those are unstable in your government. All governments, I should say. As you know, statistically speaking, most of the world's population doesn't study psychology, which is enough for one to consider them mentally challenged. You know, when I studied psychology, I actually learned how gifted I am. I'm not ashamed of any of my conditions at all. Campaign launched by UNHCR in 2014 and ended statelessness by 2014. Continuing efforts made since its dependence. Kyrgyzstan embraced this campaign and followed the recommendations from the Global Action Plan to end statelessness. Can't keep saying that. 
I mean, like, is this about birth? If it's about war. You do all these things and still want to blame the people. This PDF should be a shame. Dedication paid off in 2019 when it was declared first country in the world to eliminate statelessness. You know what? I'm going to pause right here. Go ahead and go to Universal. We'll do this because I'm going I'm to look up another definition. Universal of affecting or done by all people or things in the world or in particular group applicable to all cases. Universal adult suffrage. A person or thing having universal effects, currency, or application. So, give me a moment. So here's the Wikipedia. A stateless nation is an ethnic group, so a, a group of race or nation that does not possess its own state. The term stateless implies that the group should have such a state. Mm. Let's be realistic. There is no citizen in the world that owns its own state. No citizen in the world that owns its own country that is controlled by who? People in a government that treat themselves like kings and queens. When you look at people talking about Agenda 21, when they're in a government, they're like, Your Excellency. You, you know how, like, disillusional that, or delusional that really is? Like, it's crazy. For one, you can't be like excellence, excellency without being of royal blood. So at this point, I'm Saxon Viking. My last name is Blackborn. We're also known back in history as Big Born Bjorn. But uh, we at, our family was of royal blood and we actually married into the royal family of England. So we didn't originate from England. We actually originated from Scandinavia, from Norway. But with that said, I would be more excellency than those people in the government who claim to be kings and queens, or they act as if they're kings and queens, because then we pay them large amounts of money to sit and play experiments. They just play around with people's lives. In many cases, when it should know better with all, with all this knowledge that they claim that we should have as citizens. So that's why it actually upsets me so much. As you know, humans uh, typically only specialize in one aspect. They can be great at multiple aspects, which makes them good at multitasking. However, the reality is when spread too thin, cannot commit 100%. So the truth is, no matter if I had world blood in me or not, does that mean that I am flawless? It doesn't mean that I'm not going to make errors. And they know this, and that's why they use that as an excuse. Like, we're going to make errors at some time. No, you chose. You made a decision. So now you've got to own it. I will make this issue relatively early in life of a child to ensure the rights of the children are protected and the children has access to services such as school. Although birth registrations in Asia and the Pacific is improving, there remain an 
estimated 64 million children under five without birth registration, representing 18% of the children under five in Asia and the Pacific figure. <clears throat> And the Pacific figure of five. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Most of these children are living in South and Southwest Asia. In terms of the percentages, the Pacific subregion is the most impacted with 30% of the children under five not registered. In Southeast Asia, 17% of the children under five, 9.5 million are not registered. Eight countries in the region have achieved poor registration of all children under five. In Annex 2, Table 1, nevertheless, most countries have legislation mandating verbs to be registered within a few weeks or months. I suppose they uh, want to make sacrifices and risk starving out or being homeless just to get birth certificates. You know, if like communities or society really had humanity and they help actually uplift their community, we could actually dealt with that problem a long time ago. I actually started my shoe brand. My shoe brand identity was to serve the cycle of poverty and help 3.5 million people in the Philippines get uh, birth certificates. And you wouldn't believe how many people actually ignore me. Did you know only 13% of the world actually donated to the fight against poverty? Most of these uh, organizations actually failed. There was a church that take, that profits 25% of the donations, and they actually send children to high school, and that's where they stop. And they also don't teach financial literacy as that church because they know these schools are not going to teach it. They actually have posts treating these children like the lottery saying, pick a child that has your birth date and was born the same day as you. So what about the children that wasn't? So as a church, they should know that was not true faith. That was greed, which is, ended up also being a sin on their part. So I will say that church was a joke. Personas. Let's see. I'm on page 9 of 14. It's going to be a really long video, guys. It's probably going to take me like three hours to convert it. With increasing birth registration rates in the region, the number of percentage of children under five whose birth has not been registered should decrease in the coming years. It will be crucial to ensure that those who did not benefit from improvements in the birth registration as young, cho young children are registered later in their life. What is the percentage of the total population whose birth was not registered? And since a birth certificate is needed throughout the life of an individual, it's important to monitor and registrate the registration rate of the entire population, which reflects on the accumulated efforts to register births. I put emphasis on that again. And the, the potential backlog of individuals who need to obtain legal documentation as a part of the regional action framework, countries have set ambitious targets for 2024. They're going to just keep repeating itself basically and talking about like each uh, country. That's really all they did. I, I did look at this um, throughout this article or PDF, I should say. They have not stressed an actual plan to um, achieve this goal. Now, I can, <clears throat> excuse me again, 
I can speculate that they're talking about trying to pass a, a bill with the, you know, your medical benefits bill to add maybe more taxation as a, as a means to ask for more money when something like that should have already been covered. But, uh, yeah. There could have also been a program developed by governments or since they want to do this as a global one world new order situation, then all governments could easily set back money for a program to give these people free uh, births and hospitals and birth certificates. And they could avoid this problem. Now, it's intelligent and as evolutionalized that we have came as human beings, there is no excuse that we shouldn't have had already thought about that in government, especially if you have all of these organizations that are keeping such data. And they've been doing this for a long time. This is not nothing new. So this is the way I look at it. I've been looking at that for a while, even without the knowledge of chemo ready to go over with men to such things like this. I will put the link in into the description of this video so you guys can read more. Um yeah, I'm sorry I didn't finish the whole thing. But it's it's a, it's a lot here. My voice is kinda of getting raspy. So if you watched the whole video, I thank you. Um be sure to give the video a like. Be sure to comment and subscribe as this will help the YouTuber algorithm. Um, the bell icon and then quick call is actually optional. You don't have to do that unless you're actually a human being and not a bot. You can actually stand for things. So I mean, only person is ignore. You can't call yourself a hero if you ignore such channels like mine. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching again.